Hello guys, gals, non-binary pals, and waterfowls. It's Big Mike, and I want to welcome you to my very first movie review video. Now this is going to be a special one fam, but before we get too far into this video, I just want to point out real quick that this video is spoiler free. Now that being said, I do not consider stuff revealed in the trailer, nor do I hold that publicly available vague synopsis such as those that I found on IMBD to be spoilers. And as the title of this video suggests, today I'm going to be reviewing Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe. But before we jump into the review proper, I want to just give you a little background information about uh, why this movie is so important to me and my history with the series. I am going to attempt to show some clips from the, uh, the movie or the trailer, as well as some clips from the series. I'm hoping I am successful with this. But in the worst case scenario, and I'm not able to do this because I can't get around the copyright system, even though I do believe the clips I'm going to be using will be fair use, I'm not sure what you'll see up here, but we'll find out soon. News of this movie was very important to me, as there have been talks of a new movie for years and years. And as a fan of the series, I wanted more to duo. I loved the 2011 revival, and ratings wise, it did amazing. But the series kind of received the short end of a stick, and it was not renewed for any fault of its own. So pretty much, at least in my opinion, this is another amazing adult American animated series that kind of got screwed over just because of the network that aired it, not for any fault of its own. And in the history of adult animation, there were so many series like that, so many amazing series like that. Like Clerks the Animated Series, Mission Hill, Oblongs, etc. So the day that the official confirmation came out that there was going to be a new movie and more, I was all smiles fam. And this is part of the reason why I've loved 2022 so much. With a new Jackass movie, a new Clerks movie coming out, you know, a sequel to the Sonic the Hedgehog, a new South Park movies, new Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and of course, as our subject is today, new Beavis and Butthead, I felt as if I was reliving my childhood and high school days all over again. I have a really long history with Beavis and Butthead. My earliest memory stems from about 92 or 93. I was either 5 or 6 years old. And I remember staying up late with my older cousins to watch it. Because we were forbidden to watch it because it was so controversial at the time. Um, but we snuck and watched it anyway. And that's kind of what made it so fun. I don't remember the exact episode. But I do remember it had... It featured Soundgarden's Black Hole Sun video. Beavis and Butthead in the original series were known to watch music videos and critique them. And that was one of the videos they watched in an episode. And that would be my life, actually, as a young child. I would sneak and watch that. And up until my parents just kind of gave up on trying to stop us from watching it. Even towards the end, uh, my dad, even, he rented uh, Beavis and Butthead Do America, which is the original movie. And then fourth grade came, or maybe it was third grade, I can't remember for sure. I remember opening up the newspaper one day, and the article read something like, Beavis and Butthead are dead. And so the series has officially ended. And I was kind of taken aback. You know, this was the first time I had liked, a, a, you know, an animated series or a series in general. And it was over. Now, fortunately, I could, you know, I could catch reruns on MTV. You know, I could introduce my younger cousins, my younger brothers and sisters to Beavis and Butthead. But, you know, as time progressed, those reruns became less and less frequent. Then with the advent of the internet, you know, with the internet becoming as popular as it was in the mid-2000s and DVDs and such, I was able to, you know, fall back in love with Beavis and Butthead. But, you know, there was still something missing. You know, it was the same stuff. I wanted more. You know, and it felt like it was something that had ended too soon. And then came the revival uh, season in 2011. And that kind of brings us up to date to where we are now. Now, in addition to my own history with the series, I was also very excited about this movie for the simple fact of just how important this series is to a adult American animation. In my opinion, I believe, you know, Beavis and Butthead is one of the two major or most important adult animated series of the 1990s. Um, the other being The Simpsons. And I view those two series as kind of being the cradle of civilization for uh, adult American animation. You know, The Simpsons went on to influence countless of animated sitcoms, 
Family Guy, you know, the same creators went on to make Futurama, Beavis and Butthead. As a result of Beavis and Butthead, we have Daria, you know, we have King of the Hill. And I'm not exactly sure. I don't think Beavis and Butthead itself directly, you know, influenced a South Park. Though sometimes I do kind of feel, and this is pure speculation, it's probably wrong, by the way. Sometimes I do kind of feel that Terrence and Philip may have been slightly, you know, inspired by Beavis and Butthead. But at the very least, Beavis and Butthead, you know, allowed Mike Judge to be in a position to where he could be sort of a mentor to Matt Stone and Trey Parker. So maybe a, it's maybe a bit indirect, but, you know, we can say Beavis and Butthead it is partly responsible for South Park as well. So with all of that out of the way, let's jump into the review. Now I'm going to divide the review up into three parts that I'm going to give my final thoughts on the subject. The first part is going to be the plot, the second part is going to be the art, and the third part is going to be the humor. So first let's look at the plot. And for the plot, I'm going to be reading the synopsis from IMDB or the Internet Movie Database. Um, in order to uh, try to avoid any spoilers as much as possible. I'm also going to expand on it slightly. The synopsis reads, After a creative judge sentences them to space camp, a black hole sends our adolescent heroes 24 years into the modern future, where the duo misuse iPhones, embark on a quest to score, and become targets of the deep state. They believe they're going to score as a result of a misunderstanding. Oh, yeah. Hey boys, hey, shut up, we're busy. Let me ask you something. How would you guys like to do that, but do it for real? Whoa, you want us to do that for real? <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that's right. I want you to do that for real in space with me. <laughs> with you? <laughs> that's right. Whoa, yes, absolutely. Yes, a thousand times yes. Now go get yourselves cleaned up. Beavis, tomorrow we are going to score with that lady. <laughs> In outer space? <laughs> Wherever she wants it. Outer space, the back of a car, I don't care. <laughs> this is a bit similar to the plot of Beavis and Butthead Do America, in which a man asks Beavis and Butthead to do his wife. Now by do, he means assassinate. But Beavis and Butthead interpret this as scoring with his wife. Now to some, this may seem a bit repetitive. However, Beavis and Butthead misunderstanding things, especially things related to sex, is a common motif of the series. For example, there was one episode in the original series entitled Sexual Harassment, where the duo learn about sexual harassment, but they misunderstand it. And they believe that just because a person is minding their own business, and they're looking at that person, and they become sexually aroused, then that person has sexually harassed them. Remember, sexual harassment can be defined as any sexual interaction, be it verbal or physical, that makes its victims uncomfortable or makes it difficult for them to work. Does everyone understand what I'm trying to say here? Beavis? Butthead? Uh, sort of. Because, like, right now, I'm being, you know, sexually harassed by Kimberly. What? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> She's giving me a stiffy. Yeah. <laughs> And it makes it, like, uncomfortable for me to work and stuff. Another example comes from the revival season in 2011. There's an episode called Daughter's Hand. Now, in the past, when you wanted to marry somebody's daughter, you went to her father and asked for her hand in marriage, which is asking for his permission to marry his daughter. Now, Beavis and Butthead see this on a television program, and they misunderstand it. They think asking for somebody's hand in merits is asking for a hand job. Now, Beavis and Butthead meet a certain girl, a certain attractive girl, and say they go to ask her father for her hand. Good sir, may I ask for your daughter's hand? Whoa, uh, did he just like ask for her hand? <laughs> yeah, 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 I think he wants her to like Spank his monkey. <clears throat> yeah. Sir, we are proper gentlemen, and we wish for your daughter to use her hand upon us. <laughs> we have asked you for her hand in the manner of proper gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so you have to now. <laughs> That's the rules. You want my daughter, my sweet little angel, to perform... Oh, you sick little back! I will kill you! 
So with that in mind, this is why I don't see this as being repetitive, but more so an integral part of the series. Now let's move on and talk about the art. The art is striking. It's different from the original or even from the 2011 season. Now the original series was a bit rough, but it kind of gave it a certain charm. But what was really cool about it is that the art also improved as the series continued. So seeing the art this well polished took some time to get used to it. A part of the change in art, at least according to the Hollywood Reporter, is the fact that this is the first Beavis and Butthead animation that's officially been done by Adobe Animate. Now this is also the first work to be animated by Titmouse Inc. instead of the series' normal animation studio's rough draft. All in all though, I say it's easy to look at, it's a much, much more polished version of the duo, and the world looks much more detailed. Now let's talk about the humor. Now many fans were kind of worried going into this movie. On the one hand, they figured, you know, maybe it wouldn't be as good as the original. And it really pushed the limits of acceptability when it comes to animation. Since Beavis and Butthead's original run ended, there have been many more series such as South Park, Drawn Together, Rick and Morty, that have pushed the envelope much further than Beavis and Butthead did. Now, another very common worry that some fans had was the fact that they felt like the duo would be watered down. I can safely say, after watching the movie a few times, that I was relieved to find out that neither of these were the case. The humor here is classic Beavis and Butthead, and more so, it's in top form, fam. Now, as we mentioned before, one common form of humor throughout the series is due to them misunderstanding something. And as they're in a strange new time, you know, in our own time, 24 years after, you know, the original series was set, this is something that happens very often in this movie. Throughout the series, the duo are hyper horny teens, and they are instantly attracted to anything that looks and sounds sexual. And the movie delivers on this here as well. A great example of this is the scene where they're in space camp, simulating the maneuver that looks a lot like scoring. Whoa. True to their character, they are huge fans of double entendres. Even more so, they're even quick to point out things that aren't double entendres, but sound close to one. One of your deep state assets? She said eight ass. Whoa. Eight ass. She said eight ass. Jesus, what is wrong with you? I did not say eight ass. She said it again. And lastly, it's just their sheer stupidity. Now, sometimes in culture you come across something that's so stupid, it's funny. Oftentimes this phrase is used to describe something that wasn't meant to be funny, but it makes so little sense or so illogical, it's funny. Though sometimes this phrase is used positively to describe something, and Beavis and Butthead fits this use perfectly. The duo are dim with it, and a part of the humor comes from the fact that they have very little understanding, if any understanding at all, of the universe around them. Great example of this from the movie is when they're training in zero gravity and Butthead complains the floor is broken. Uh, damn it! I think the floor is not working. Now for my final thoughts. I found the movie to be a comedic masterpiece, but it's much more than that. Honestly, fam, for Beavis and Butthead, it's a movie with a lot of heart. And I think it's no exaggeration to say that Beavis and Butthead Do the Universe has more character development of the duo than any other official media. In this world of horrible executed reboots, remakes, and rehashes, I was glad to see such a huge part of my childhood come back in perfect form that would please both long-term fans and those looking to get into the series for the first time. Now later this year, a new season of Beavis and Butthead is set to premiere, and my one hope for the series is that Judge and Co. can keep up this same energy. And with that fam, we're gonna end it here. So I highly recommend you give this movie a watch, no matter if you're a new fan or long-term veteran of the series. Alright guys, gals, non-binary pals, and waterfowls, that's gonna do it for this video. 
I want to give a special thanks to Fran, who does a wonderful job doing my art. A special thanks to all of my friends on Twitter. I wouldn't be here without you all. And most importantly, a special thank you to all of you for watching. Please like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you dislike it. Feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. And if you like my content, please subscribe and turn your notifications on. Until next time, fam, remember, just be yourself and you'll be awesome. Peace out!